Welcome to the 2021 Play for K, benefiting the KL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation. You are watching the Big 12 on ESPN. Today, the Baylor Lady Bears, who have been dominating this conference for the last several years, a tall task. Their great defense has to try to stop Charlie Collier, who has been averaging a double-double for the Texas Longhorns. And a lot of attention has been paid to Charlie Collier as she gets ready to enter the WNBA draft. Maybe not this year. She is eligible to go this year, but the big question is, just how good is Charlie Collier? And we get to see her play today. Pam Ward along with LaChina Robinson. So uh, here we go. She's averaging a double-double, as I said. Let's see Charlie play. Yeah, we have National Player of the Year candidate and projected number one pick in the 2021 WNBA draft, Charlie Collier today. And what makes her special? At 6'5", she can score from anywhere, but her footwork has improved, so she has a counter move. She can take it off of the bounce. She can force your big to guard her from the three-point line, where she is shooting 34% from long range. But check the form. And last but not least, she is big and strong. She has a pro body. You see in the way she blocks shots, how she rebounds. Collier's already had a 40-point game this season, 14 double-doubles, and it's third in the nation in rebounding. 44 points, in fact, against North Texas. She has been absolutely terrific this year. And for the Baylor Lady Bears, they have a ton of talent. We can start with their inside player, another Big 12 and National Player of the Year candidate in Alyssa Smith. Yeah, when you think of what makes Baylor special, it definitely starts with their defense, but it also is their ability to dominate the glass and their inside game. And that starts with Nalissa Smith. You see the numbers, top 10 in the Big 12 and points, field goal percentage, rebounds, double-double. She's incredible in transition as a scorer as well. She dominates on the interior. I cannot wait to see the matchup with Smith and Collier. They may not guard each other, Pam. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. But either way, the paint game is important in this matchup. Yeah, and Alyssa Smith in particular, the last four games has been absolutely terrific. She has eight double-doubles in her last 10 for this Baylor team that has only lost one game in the Big 12. That was to Iowa State. Uh, loss that they have avenged and uh, Kim Mulkey now in her uh, third decade of the as the head coach you see the 10 regular season Big 12 championships they have been absolutely dominating 10 straight championships just nine losses since 2010 2011 in total in the Big 12 and she does have three championship rings and Vic Schaefer in his first year at Texas after eight years at Mississippi State took that club to the final four two times in a row. This is only the second time that Mulkey and Schaefer have faced each other as head coaches the last time in 2017 when Mississippi State upset Baylor to get to the first of their back-to-back -back final fours and right off the bat we see Melissa Smith get to work. The Texas starting five, Kyra Lambert, the grad transfer from Duke, has been great at settling this team down. Audrey Warren, very versatile. This is a team that does not go very deep, however. And the ball goes over to Baylor. Both of these teams will play primarily man-to-man -man defense, but this is just a fantastic screen and back cut to get that first score by Melissa Smith. And, of course, the pass coming from Dee Dee Richards, number one in the Big 12 in assists. And Dee Dee Richards, number two in white for Baylor. That's Moon Urson, who gets the ball over in the corner. Trinity Oliver. Urson bottled up. Good job by Alan Taylor on defense as the shot clock winds down. But it's nice to have Richards to Smith as a combination. And beautiful pass on the pick and roll. And you use that term bottled up quite a bit in this game. If Vic <laughs> Schaefer's happy with his defense, they will smother and cover you. This Texas Longhorn team very focused on the defensive end with Schaefer at the helm. On the run, Celeste Taylor, a sophomore from Valley Stream, New York who was one of the favorites of Coach Schaefer, said she'll step in front of a freight train to take a charge. Very physical player who was able to get the basket, and now the ball comes back over to Texas. 
And we see off of the top, Baylor has Queen Egbo guarding Charlie Collier. And, you know, we were wondering if it would be Smith, if it would be Egbo. The important thing for Queen is staying out of foul trouble. She's a player that tends to get in some early foul trouble. Collier does a great job of getting to the free throw line. So Queen needs to stay on the court. Yes, you're right, Collier, making a living really at the free throw line. She's taken 38% of any free throw taken by a Texas player this year and hits them at an 82% clip. And transition defense is going to be important for both of these teams, but especially for Texas because that's where Baylor is special, playing defense to offense, getting rebounds and getting out and running. Boy, Egbo, that's a nice move over Charlie Collier to get her first basket. And beautiful footwork there by Egbo, sixth player of the year last season, expected to do much more. She has always had the comfort of having either Kalani Brown playing in front of her, Lauren Cox, but she is prime time this season. Baylor out to this early four point lead. Here's Lambert getting it inside and then the turnaround nicely done. Lauren Ebo with the score. Yeah, big lineup in for the Longhorns with Ebo in with Collier trying to counter the size that Baylor has on the inside. Ball goes over to Texas, rebounding so important. Boy, Dee Dee Richards, so nice to see her out on the floor. She took a spill in their last game, had to come out of the game in the third quarter, but fortunately, she passed the concussion test, everything's okay, and this is after she took that, or had a horrible collision in October with a teammate in a scrimmage. So I mean, it's good to see Dee Dee out there is definitely one of the toughest players in the country by far. If you saw her spill in their last game, you would know exactly why. And she has bounced back. Kim Mulkey said she's doing well and good to see her out on the floor. Needy is indeed leading the conference in assists, ninth in the nation in her first year playing point. Well, with the way that Texas is playing ball screens, they're sending two defenders and trying to take away vision on the pass. But you see the numbers here on Dee Dee Richards. Her first season playing the point guard spot. She had never played point guard even coming into Baylor. I mean, she just has a knack for how to make a pass. And of course, she's got some great finishers on her team as well. But I just, at 6'1", she's impressed me with her passing ability. And you Boone see denial, denial there defensively by Baylor as well, Pam. That's how they are able to get out and run in their transition. And that is where they are at their best. And uh, Moon Urson with a nice fake underneath draws the foul and heads to the free throw line. The foul on Celeste Taylor. And Moon Urson is really one of the great stories in the country. A senior, first-year starter. And, boy, every time you talk to Kim Mulkey, she just beams from ear to ear when she talks about Moon. Well, she said if there is one player that she would beg to return next season with this year being a year of forgiveness, she said it's Moon Urson. You know, she said she deserves to be able to play out the way her career, the way this season has gone. She's waited her turn, um, has a great disposition about just working hard and waiting for her opportunity, and she's just had a fantastic year. She had only started five games in her entire career before this season. And with the change in Ebo in the game, now Nalissa Smith is guarding Charlie Collier, but she hasn't touched the ball a lot to start this one. Egbo tied up by Taylor. Charlie Collier, in fact, has not taken a shot in the first Four minutes and 17 seconds of this game is a good shot at Charlie, who is uh, from the Houston, Texas area. Averaged 13 points a game last year, up to over 22 points per game this season. And one of the best stories. Year. Yeah, one of the best stories. Sorry, Pam, in college basketball, a young woman who's always had the, the tools, but has really just found that next level, her A game. And, and Vic Schaefer has come in as. Joanne Allen Taylor will go to the free throw line, but he has given Charlie Collier some freedom on the offensive end. We heard Coach Landers talking about that at halftime of our last game and how he's opened up the floor for her, given her some perimeter opportunities, and boy, is she shining in her new role. Last foul was on D.D. Richards. 
Tigers numbers are just so impressive. This is Joanne Allen Taylor, Jr. from Houston. But she could not deliver at the free throw line. Missed both of them. Urson shows you the athleticism with the elevation over the defender. Yeah, there was a hedge on that ball screen by Charlie Collier, but she's got to get out there far enough to make Moon Urson have to take one more step to let the defense recover. You can't just hedge and throw out that arm. You got to stay there long enough to make him do something different. And the ball trickles in. It's Warren with the bucket. Audrey Warren, who has missed a total of seven games in and out of some concussion protocol, had some issue with that last year. But this is a high compliment. Vic Schaefer compared Audrey Warren to Dominique Dillingham who was my all-time favorite player when he was at Mississippi State. If there is anything tougher than nails, Dominique Dillingham and Warren both exemplify that. Two players that will hit the deck. They will die for the loose ball. They'll take a charge. I mean, Warren is, uh, she just puts her body on the line on the defensive end. I love watching that young woman play. Person again with the true jump shot. She's off to a great start now with five points. Still waiting for Collier, but great defense as we see Melissa Smith all over Collier, who is looking for her first shot of the game. Baylor out to the good start, leading it 11 to 6. And we want to welcome everyone who was watching that men's basketball game finish up in overtime. Pam Ward along with LaChina Robinson. We have number seven Baylor taking on the Texas Longhorns. First of two games they will play this year. And a lot of eyes are on Charlie Collier, who is uh, certainly a national player of the year candidate. Yeah, not only is she one of the best players in the country, but she's projected to go number one overall in the 2021 WNBA draft if she decides to go. But Collier is a special player because at 6'5", she's incredibly versatile, has good hands, good mobility, very agile. She can score around the cup with either hand, um, can stretch the floor. She's going to bring your five player out and face up, uh, has a pro body. Uh, at, at this point in her career, which is huge when you're trying to make that jump to the next level. So um, just excited to continue to watch her develop. But what a, what a season she's having. But so far, she has not been able to get a shot off against this very stout Baylor defense. And for the Bears, Nalissa Smith, who is also, like Collier, a junior, has had a fantastic season. Well, she's silky smooth, Pam, and you can see it in the way she runs the floor, but also in the way she cuts. She's starting to understand how to make reads, where to get her shots, keeping in mind that this is a season where this is Nalissa Smith's team, no Lauren Cox, no Kalani Brown. And so she has had to be the dominant player for Kim Mulkey, and she has answered the call. You see her points from Wednesday night's win over Texas Tech, but she anchors their defense. She anchors their efforts on the glass. Just a fun player to watch in all aspects of the game. And in that game against Texas Tech, not just the double-double, but she also scored the 1,000th point of her career. So Melissa Smith off to a great start and Texas got to try to figure out a way to get the ball to Charlie Collier. Welcome to Baylor. Again, those of you who uh, were watching the men's basketball game finish up. It was uh, Loyola and Drake had to go to overtime. Pam Ward and with China Robinson joining you from Baylor where the Lady Bears are off to an 11-6 lead. Baylor has dominated in this series. They've won eight straight and 23 of the last 24 ball games. And so far, Dee Dee Richards has four assists on the Baylor five made field goals, all of them coming in the paint. And uh, this is what you have missed so far. Charlie Collier, number 35. That was Kevin Durant's number two at Texas. 
great player, but <laughs> China, she hasn't taken a shot yet. Yeah, I mean, and Baylor has the number one defense in the country, so you expect that their number one priority would be to take Charlie Collier out of a rhythm in this game, and they've done a good job of denial. Um, you know, this is the kind of game where Charlie can't get frustrated. Baylor's going to be physical with her. Um, she's probably going to have some patience in terms of getting touches, but it's about just tell, letting your teammates know when you're open and, and knowing that you need to be a focal part of the offense today. And Audrey Warren draws the charge. That's the, the Dominique Dillingham kind of thing that, that you expect from Audrey Warren for uh, Texas. Yeah, we were just talking about Warren and her toughness. She's missed some games this season with concussion symptoms, but has never actually had a concussion. But she just reads plays so well on the defensive end, gets her feet set, makes the extra effort, and it paid off on that possession. That foul was on Dijanae Carrington who is uh, number 21 in white for Baylor, and Carrington has been absolutely terrific coming off the bench in the last four games, averaging about 16 points per game. And that was after Dijanae had to be out. She was in COVID protocol for about four weeks, and we had the Iowa State game a couple of weeks ago, and she came out like gangbusters, and since then has been a very, very valuable player off the bench for Kim Mulkey. Yeah, she's been on the tear the last four games, and she is very important because of her ability to stretch the floor so that Baylor can use their mid-range game and use their interior game. And she can do this as well, rebound. She plays great defense. Just her overall physicality um, has been a great addition for Baylor. Four straight games in which she has scored in double figures coming off the bench. Baylor on a... Nice winning streak in first place in the Big 12 as usual. And that's a travel. They got a little bit more breathing room last night. How about it? Oklahoma upsetting second place West Virginia? Yeah, what a stretch for Oklahoma in Big 12 play. Really starting to get their stride. They're a team that's been just ravished to short in numbers all season long. But uh, boy, playing some great basketball, especially taking down a West Virginia team that had quite a streak. Um, in recent weeks. Yeah, West Virginia only scored five points in the fourth quarter in their loss to OU yesterday. No connection on that pass inside. Dee, Dee Richards does not turn the ball over very much for this Baylor team. And again, remarkable that she had not played point until this year, her senior season in college. National Defensive Player of the Year last year, and Lander just went by her. Beautiful take by Lambert, and I know Coach Schaefer wants to see Lambert be more aggressive with her offense, but there she denies Dee Dee Richards the inbound pass as well. Her defense is just as important as her offense. Lambert, the grad transfer from Duke. Smith can't deliver. Rebound taken down by Celeste Taylor. Taylor, excuse me. Taylor with the basketball. Missed about missed three games, in fact, with a bad foot this year. Still not 100%, but playing very well. Urson, good defense on Alan yeah. Taylor. Really good defense by Carrington. Didn't let Celeste Taylor turn the corner. And then Moon Urson does a nice job as well, taking away the vision of the mid-range. Yeah, you can never underestimate this Baylor defense. As usual, they are among the nation's leaders in all of the major defensive categories. Richards from the outside sees it rim out. Inside two minutes to go, Charlie Collier still has not taken a shot for the Longhorns. Finally, Collier gets the shot, but it misses wide left as she continues to be defended by Smith. And then the ball goes out of bounds. Collier off to a very uncharacteristically slow start. Well, and it's up to her teammates to get her the basketball. You know, they've got to set her up for success. She did get a shot on that last possession, but you got to credit Baylor's defense in that they have kept the guards from making a lot of crisp passes and, you know, just basically dictating where Texas is going with the basketball. Baylor has missed its last four shots. Make it five. Good defensive effort by Ebo. 
And Moon Urson gives him a fresh 20 as we hit a minute to go in the first quarter. Underneath, Smith slices in and got fouled. And Baylor has gotten that look off of ball screens on several possessions where they've gotten the big cutting to the rim. And the expectation of your Vic Schaefer is that the help defense will be in position, especially if that's Charlie Collier on the backside. She's got to get there and, and try to help to take away that look. That foul was on Lauren Ebo. The uh, Penn State transfer picks up her first foul. It was part of the... Uh, the many people who got the blanket eligibility and back on December 16th, eligible to play right away. Smith at the free throw line. Melissa Smith has been fantastic here in recent games. A career high rebound, 16 against TCU. 28 points we already mentioned. Her efficiency and scoring has improved. And you hear Vic say, Vic Schaefer <laughs> saying, you're up, Charlie, you're up. There's Charlie. She can shoot from there, but decided not to. Now she will, but has it rim out. Yeah, she's been a little passive on her touches, but I'm okay with her not forcing it. You know, it's a close game. It's a three-point game. She does need to get into a rhythm here, but she's trying to let it come to her naturally. But a very low-scoring first quarter, much to the liking of two very defensive-minded coaches in Kim Mulkey and Vic Schaefer, two of the best. Taylor just committed her second personal foul for Celeste Taylor for Texas. And here's Moon Urson at the free throw line. Thirty-one seconds left here. Baylor does have a foul to give. They get an offensive rebound. Yeah, yet another one. The best rebounding team in the nation. They're out rebounding their opponents by 19 and a half rebounds per game on average. By far the best in the country. And another offensive board. Good hustle, but ultimately thrown away and thrown away again. You know, Urson saved the possession, but then went back court with it. Just under six seconds left to go for the Longhorns. Vic Schaefer's team. He said he would like to keep the score in the 60s, and at this pace, we're not we're not getting there. So, <laughs> this is, the low score is something that he would be pleased with. Not the eight points for his team, certainly. Yeah, he said we can't compete putting up 80, 90 points a game. We just don't have that kind of offense. Lambert, desperation shot and a low scoring first quarter comes to an end. Charlie Collier, no points, just two shots in the first quarter. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Heineken. Enjoy Heineken responsibly. Cancer research is really important. My dad died of lung cancer. And so any type of cancer, I mean, I know so many families, I have so many friends who have family members that have cancer. And so just to donate and just to think of a loved one, even if it hasn't affected you, it can help someone else. So I really think it's, it's an amazing research and I feel like everybody should buy into it because you know, you can save someone's life and um, it's, just, it's just scary and it's crazy how cancer can take a loved one's life away. But um, you know, we're doing all we can to help. Charlie Collier was so passionate in talking to us about the importance of cancer research. Her father, Elliot, passed away from lung and liver cancer, and she talked about how her father shaped her style of play mentally. She said, he always had my back. If I got down on myself, he would say, keep going. She said, he would definitely block my shot in the front yard. He had no mercy. Um, but she said she just hears him in her ear saying, keep going. And she said, I became a different person after my dad passed for the better, a better player, a better student. Here they are shooting in the gym together. But Charlie just sharing words of encouragement for everyone that we all support cancer research through the KEOW Cancer Fund. And we, we do in 
invite you to support the Kayao Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Donate at kayao.com. Almost $8 million raised over the last few years. And uh, boy, it was Charlie Collier. Talk about an impressive young woman as we had a chance to spend some time with her yesterday via Zoom safely. Uh, but very impressive. And now Baylor is heating it up. They missed their last eight shots of the first quarter, but have hit their first two here. Uh, Smith following a shot by Urson earlier in the quarter. Yeah, and Alyssa Smith is the player that has gotten into a rhythm. When you look at the two from our open, Collier and, and Alyssa, she got an early score on a pass from Richards, and that time you saw the face-up game because she's got that in her arsenal as well. Queen Egbo coming up with that rebound. For Baylor, now Collier picks up a rebound. Only her second of the game. But Charlie Collier has not scored today, averaging 22 plus points per game, plus 13 boards. But facing a suffocating Baylor defense. Smith came out and picked her up at the three point line. Shot clock in the single digits. Charlie Collier got a switch. She needs to try to post up. Yeah. Carrington went and switched out on her, and Charlie's at least six inches taller, but Texas could not get her the ball. When you look at these numbers, Charlie has historically struggled against the Baylor Bears to see 2020 regular season matchups. Not a lot of points. And that is following suit today as Charlie is 0 for 2. Ira Lambert has just been called for the personal foul for Texas. Ira Lambert graduating from Duke with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree from their school of business, the Fuqua School of Business, one of the best in the country, as Charlie Collier takes a seat. Well, you know, it was interesting when Kyra Lambert decided to transfer to Texas. She was named to the Nancy Lieberman Award for top point guard. She was named to that list, and that just speaks volumes for the amount of respect that people have from her, for her. She's from Texas and missed two years of, of basketball with knee injury. So it's just good to see her back out there. Yeah, and really one of, the, one of the most impressive student athletes, certainly, that we have uh, met over the last few seasons. And she actually was going to go to Mississippi State. She wanted to play for Coach Schaefer and a couple other players on this Texas team followed him to Austin as they take a look at uh, her bio. And uh, yeah, missed because of the ACL injury, had at least three surgeries, but uh, stuck with it. She went 962 days between games. That's over two years and seven months before she came back and eventually played at Duke. Well, when you watch Kyra Lambert play, you know she's going to fit in very well with a Vic Schaefer team. No matter what her offense does, she can get in a stand. She's going to deny, deny the inbound pass here. Loves to play on the defensive end of the floor. Has the passion for it. It has set the tone for this team in Vic Schaefer's first year. Coach Schaefer says this team is still miles away from, he wants, from where he wants it to be defensively. It looks like Warren just drew another charge. And Texas has lured Baylor into that exact play on a number of possessions on the small screen. And they've been getting their help defense over. And they're really counting on Queen Egbo to not be able to make the adjustment here, and she doesn't. And I thought Warren was just there. And, and some people would say, well, she moved her foot. Well, it doesn't matter. As long as you establish defensive position bef between the ball handler and the basket, you're legal. First foul on Egbo, the second charge drawn by Warren. There's Warren with the pass, and then the double. That's Caitlin Bickle, one of the more physical players for Baylor. And she forces a turnover. And Ebo is one of the more high percentage shooters for Texas doesn't get a lot of offensive looks, but they have really tried to play through her in the first part of this game. 
Yeah, Ebo, the only player for Texas who is shooting at least 50% in conference games. Collier is the play only player shooting over 40%. So just two of them shooting over 40% on the entire team, much to Coach Schaefer's chagrin, and that just it looks so smooth sometimes in Melissa Smith. Well, and that's the shot that Texas is going to give Smith. They're going to rotate over, not allow, allow her to drive or get close to the basket. She's going to have to prove that she could knock down the pick and pop every time. Texas still looking for its first field goal of this quarter. Another rebound for Urson, who quickly gets it up to D.G. Richards. And Bickle tried to force it inside. Texas has got to capitalize on transition opportunities, try to get to the free throw line. They have not had great success in their half-court offense execution. And a block of Allen Taylor's shot. Who else but the reigning National Defensive Player of the Year, 6'1", Dee Dee Richards, understands angles, stays between Alan Taylor and the basket, and gets a throw at the end. And had a nice, I just got a block on you yell right afterwards. Shot clock into single digits. Alan Taylor looking for some help, and it's Warren finally, Texas. Over four minutes into the quarter, gets its first field goal of the second. I like the call. When Audrey Warren is at the four spot, she is going to be more mobile than the big lineup than an Alyssa Smith when she's in the game. Maybe not Bickle, but she got to take Smith on a switch there and went right to the rim. Richards into Smith, who couldn't deliver. Warren able to get it quickly over to Lambert. And Smith is actually guarding Warren, so they may try to play through her again here. Come on, Joe! Carrington with the defense on Alan Taylor. You might have heard uh, Coach Schaefer saying, come on, Joe. That's uh, what the, he calls Joe and Alan, Alan Taylor, number 11. Again, with Warren at the four spot and Alyssa Smith guarding her, using her mobility and her ball handling to beat Smith to the rim. So Charlie Collier on the bench for Texas has not scored and 14 seconds left on the clock when we come back. College basketball is presented by Pizza Hut. Any email. Yes. Thank you, Kelsey and Boy, Charlie Collier has not scored in this game. Baylor's defense has been stout as usual. Warren from the outside, and the ball goes over to Baylor. But as we had mentioned earlier in the game, this is uh, nothing new that, that Baylor has been able to shut down Collier. Well, the plan coming in was to allow Collier to maybe face up, but definitely crowding her in the paint. But Texas has got to find a way to clear her some space, to get her some touches, some opportunities, either where she can drive from the top of the key, try to clear the defense away so that she can get one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the post. But the, the challenge is that Texas doesn't shoot the three well consistently, so the defense is able to stay honest in on Collier. Only Baylor makes fewer threes per game on average than Texas in the Big 12. Collier is one of their three-point threats, but she is over on the bench. Good Coach defense here by her Texas. players to get in the paint. That work. Oh boy. But see, that's the kind of pass that Dee Dee Richards can make at 6-1 over the top of a smaller defender. Excellent pass. Carrington nails it. You see the run to start the quarter. Texas has only two field goals in the last 11 minutes. And 
which goes back to the first quarter. You see they're struggling just to get any kind of a look. With the shot clock dying, another tough shot, another one and done as Urson grabs it. Everything contested. Texas not allowing, excuse me, Baylor not allowing Texas to turn the corner. And now the transition game. Was that Danny Richards again? Uh, Carrington finishes. Dejanae Carrington, the Stanford transfer. One of the best six players out there going has hit back-to-back -back threes. Baylor's up 14. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Order today at PizzaHut.com. Pam Ward and LaChina Robinson joining you on this Valentine's Day, also part of our Play for K initiative. The uh, you know, all-time great coaches, K. Howard, NC State. Texas running their dribble weave offense out of the timeout. They're trying to get to a piece of the paint to get to their mid-range game. The shot was off there, but they have just got to continue to be aggressive about getting two feet in the paint. But again, Baylor has just been suffocating defensively. And another empty trip for the Longhorns. How about this? Dee Dee Richards has more assists than Texas has field goals. Dee Dee has seven assists. Texas has only hit five shots from the floor. Well, on the last two possessions as Egbo knocks it down, Dee Dee Richards has found the weak side on that skip pass. Texas is going to bring all their defense to the strong side, but on the skip pass, Carrington has been open, and it takes a while for that closeout to get there, and Baylor's been able to make them pay. Texas still can't hit from the outside. The ball belongs to the Lady Bears. And Vic Schaefer made it very clear that his guards were going to have to hit shots today. That was one of his keys. He was like, when we get looks, we got to get it to go down because he knew that getting looks against Baylor suffocating defense was not going to happen in high volume. Texas has missed 12 of its 13 shots in this second quarter. Melissa Smith, smooth as silk again. So we saw Audrey Warren taking advantage of Smith with a face-up game on one end. Well, Smith's got the advantage in that matchup, taking Warren into the post with her size. And finally, Texas is able to get a shot to go down. Celeste Taylor hits it, and Charlie Collier is back into the game for the Longhorns after quite a long sit-down. Urson draws some contact. The ball goes out of bounds and stays with Baylor. One thing to keep in mind about this Texas Longhorn team, they only returned four letter winners, had eight newcomers, and they're playing under a new system with Vic Schaefer. And so there has definitely been moments, and they've had seven different lineups this year. So they haven't been able to find their continuity Ball will go the other way here on a turnover by Baylor, but they haven't been able to quite find the continuity on the offensive end. And Vic Schaefer also isn't particularly happy with the defense either. I think they're ninth in the Big 12 in field goal percentage defense. That is not Vic Schaefer territory at all. So no. he is still trying to implement his system. Egbo called for the foul on the moving screen, and then you compound that with trying to get to know all these new players playing during the COVID crisis. He says you're not able to spend as much time off the court with the players as he would like. As Ebo delivers. And the newcomers that were returning are in new roles. I mean, I believe he only had 20 that at two that averaged over 20 minutes per game. And so he's got a lot of responsibility on players that really hadn't been in those positions. And you can say the same thing about Baylor. But Baylor has the Dee Dee Richards and the Melissa Smith to kind of anchor what they do. Hoyer just picked up her, or picked up the foul, I should say, for Texas. That is her second. Here's I guess Urson I should at the line. I should also say, Pam, uh, Baylor doesn't have a new system. That's, a, that's the biggest difference. We invite everybody to watch the ACC Big 12 Big Monday doubleheader 
as number nine Virginia takes on Florida State at 7 Eastern, and then the Big 12 as number seven Texas Tech heads to Fort Worth to play TCU. All that coming your way tomorrow on ESPN and the ESPN app. A minute to go here in the second quarter. It's been all Baylor. Texas is shooting just 25% from the floor. Collier, finally. You see how Texas cleared out that side of the floor for Collier to get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. They hadn't done a good job with their spacing in this first half, enough to get Collier the looks that she needs. Good call by Vic Schaefer. Collier has been on the bench for a while, but he gets her in the game and the total clear out there on the isolation. Now there was an, another defender that came help side in Bickle, but she's not big enough to get in Charlie's view. And that's where she has gotten better is her decision making in the low block. And she turns and she's effective there. Yeah, but look what just happened here. Charlie Collier just picked up her third personal foul. And Warren comes in for her. So Charlie sits with two points and three fouls in this first half. Now, I'm not sure where she picked up that second foul because I know I looked during a timeout when she was on the bench and she was not in foul trouble. Harrington gets one out of two at the line as Baylor extends its lead now to 14 points. Whistle away from the action, negates the Melissa Smith breakaway. Caitlin Bickle called for the personal foul for Baylor. Look at Kim Mulkey looking sharp in the pink leather. Of course. The pink leather motorcycle jacket with the jeans too. <laughs> Loving it. One shot. So the shot clock is off. You hear Coach Schaefer saying, take one shot. He wants him to bleed this clock out. The drive, a little bit too strong. And the basketball ends up in Carrington's hands. And Texas commits the foul in the backcourt. Wow tough break right before the half for Texas. Yeah, that's Audrey Warren called for the personal foul. You see Vic Schaefer, some of the frustration, talking to Roy Goldbayan, Michael McConnell, Julie Cromanhook, our other officials this afternoon in Waco. Harrington right back at the line. Now we Coach can hear Mulkey. Kim clear as day. Do you think I Caitlin mean, Bickle she, she can doesn't hear her? Want, she doesn't want any <laughs> accidental fouls. She just saw what happened to Texas, and she wants them off the free throw line with 2.5 here. Some blood for Carrington. Alex Olson in his 21st year, very fine athletic trainer for Baylor, taking care of it. I mean, while we were talking about Texas and their lack of scoring, Baylor's got 33 points. I mean, that's manageable in a half for a team that can really run it up. But the what a Baylor 33-17 as they're trying to beat Texas yet again. Coming up, the E-Trade Halftime Report with Kelsey, Andy, and Rebecca. Welcome back to the 2021 Play for K, benefiting the KYOW Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation, our own Holly Rowe among the cutouts at Baylor, helped herself by the V Foundation and KYOW. And uh, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Uh, glad that you are with us, Pam Ward, along with the China Robinson. Baylor in control of this game in large part because their defense has been ridiculous, especially on Charlie Collier. Yeah, they held Texas to 27% field goal shooting in that first half, and they did not allow Charlie Collier 
to get comfortable. Every shot was contested. I didn't think Collier was as aggressive as we may see her in the second half. Decent look, but still a contested shot at the free throw line right here. Another one, Smith using her length to cover her up. But more than the shots she got, it's the shots she didn't get. She only had three touches. She did get in some foul trouble. Three field goal shots, excuse me. She did get into some foul trouble, but looked to, for Texas to try to get her in a little bit more isolation um, and to clear off the floor some for her to just go to work. And you see the numbers uh, for Charlie. One more foul than point, and Charlie Collier is in the National Player of the Year conversation in several mock drafts for the WNBA. She is at the very top of the board. Remember, she's a junior, so... Uh, is eligible for the draft this year, but not having the kind of day that we're used to seeing. But Baylor has been doing this to Charlie Collier now regularly when these two teams meet. Well, it's no secret that Baylor has been the best defensive team in the country for years. I mean, when you look at their field goal percentage defense, they've led the nation. So they are going to take away your first option. They're going to make life hard for you, and that's what they did. Let's see how Texas responds out of the locker room. Carrington hit a couple of threes in the first half. Off the mark, Collier gets the rebound again. Charlie Collier averaging 13 rebounds over 22 points per game, but has been smothered by this Baylor defense. And you see the rankings. Right now they are second in the country. I think it's North Carolina a t is number one. But in the power rankings, uh, you see it's Baylor, Baylor, Baylor for the last several years as far as a uh, defense goes. Moon Urson had eight rebounds in the first half. Good rebound by Egbo to keep the possession alive. Oh boy, another Moon. offensive rebound for the Bears. Moon Urson at 5-6 is often the best rebounder on the floor. She has a 34-inch vertical. So don't sleep on the size. Right here, uses her body. She's incredibly strong and gets Baylor yet another opportunity. So it's interesting when you look at the lineups because at half, I didn't feel like Baylor had a great rebound um, advantage over Texas, but Ebo has been in for Texas, so Vic has gone big. But it'll be interesting to see if he allows Ebo to continue to be the number one option on the inside instead of sticking Charlie Collier on the interior where she may be able to uh, make a little bit more of an impact on the offensive end. She looks hesitant on the perimeter, and that's where she's played um, to start a lot of their offensive sets. They're both Collier and Warren have three personal fouls for Texas, and this is not a deep team. They give it up. Dee Dee Richards, boy, what a ball player. Missed that one, but the follow is good by Smith. Smith is having an incredible afternoon. We came into this game talking about the two inside presence for both of these teams, both National Player of the Year candidates and Collier and Smith. Well, Smith has got the better of the two in this game. And Alyssa Smith, 12 points, four rebounds. Charlie Collier, just the two points, two boards, and as we mentioned, the three personal fouls. And she has 13 games this year in which she's had at least 20 points, including 44 against North Texas. TCU, she had 23 points and 20 boards. The 20 rebounds, a career high for Charlie, who is really upped her numbers from last year, her sophomore season, brand new head coach and Vic Schaefer. Again, option looking to Ebo on the first side there. Smith comes down with another rebound, a held ball, but the possession arrow keeps it. With Baylor. Texas with a rare opportunity after the steal, and Allen Taylor, who did not score in the first half, has a chance for a three-point play. Started with their defense. We know that Texas is going to pick up full court. They will not leave their offensive assignment when they're on the defensive end, so they will be opportunistic about getting opportunities. And let's see if they can get some momentum. They, we saw a little bit of emotion. Let's hope this helps them.
D.D. Richards guarded out on the perimeter by Lambert. Texas did a nice job of denial. Forced D.D. Richards to keep the ball in her hands for much of this offensive possession. Carrington wanted it. She got the long pass all the way across the court, drives, and delivers. Tough. Golly, how valuable has Carrington been to this team? Just one of their best three-point shooters. We already mentioned they're not as a team known for their three-point shooting, but Carrington can do so many things. She's a very good defender as well. We saw her do a great job on Ashley Jones, who's leading the Big 12 in scoring for Iowa State when they played a couple of weeks ago. And boy, what a, what a different element this grad transfer has brought to this team. Well, the nation was on alert when Carrington decided she was going to leave Stanford because you know the impact that a player like Dijanae could have on any roster, but for her to go to Baylor just extends what they've done over the past few years with transfers, with Jackson, with Cooper. Um, and, and we see Dijanae really stepping in, especially with her outside shot at the right time. Had a conversation with Coach Mulkey just a few years ago, and she said that that it was her goal was to make sure she always had at least one scholarship available just to get a grad transfer. She said she didn't love it at first, but realizes how important and vital it is. And as you mentioned, the last three years, she has gotten grad transfers that have done very good things for her team. Well, and you have to credit her staff, starting with Satya Messer, who is one of the best recruiters in the country. Year after year, Baylor is usually in the top five. They had the number one class in both 2018 and 2016. They had the number four class in 2015, 2017. And then you look at the, the, the transfers that they bring in. That all adds to that recruiting piece and how they're able to draw great players to play for the Lady Bears. And that translates into these banners. Lots and lots of banners, three-time national champions, perennial Big 12 champions. They have absolutely dominated in this conference. And since the 2010-2011 season, they have lost only nine games in the Big 12. One hundred and eighty and nine in the Big 12 during that time. And then two of the three national championships coming in that span. Well, a lot of that goes back to their def their rebounding reputation. And they've out-rebounded 147 of their last 157 opponents. I mean, that's that kind of consistency, it helps. Richards checking out, make sure that everything is okay. And took a really nasty spill in their last game, came out in the third quarter, but everything is checked out all right. Boy, first half for Didi, eight assists, just one turnover. Well, and she hasn't scored a bucket. So, you know, you would think that the defense would start to sag off of her and play her for the pass, but it doesn't matter. She uses that size to see over and just has really good chemistry with her teammates. Oh, Baylor up 20 as we take a timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Burger King. One dollar your way only at Burger King. Welcome back to Baylor. The big story for the Bears, Nalissa Smith has had a great afternoon. She just moves so well without the basketball. She's made great reads in pick and roll situations using the pick and pop game. You're seeing her face up game on display. We talk so much about what she does in the paint with rebounding and scoring in the low block. But to me, she has a complete game. And yes, she can extend to the three point line. But when you watch the way she moves in transition and just her overall accuracy and most of her double doubles have come in recent games. She's got eight in the last 10 games, nine on the season. So she is really starting to hit her stride in a major way and coming into her own as the focal point of the offense for Baylor. I thought she got snubbed last year, honestly, though, Pam. She was honorable mention All-American. I thought she should have been on an All-American team. 
Yes, and if she's, if she's left off this year, then there's really something wrong. Melissa Smith is playing the best basketball of her career, according to her head coach, Kim Mulkey. She's coming off a monster game. Texas Tech, 28 points, 13 rebounds, the most points she has ever scored on the road for Baylor. I mean, she'll definitely have a say in the Big 12 Player of the Year, and you got to be excited when you watch the bigs in this league. Natasha Mack, Melissa Smith, um, obviously Charlie Collier, three of not only the best players in the Big 12, but in the country and what they do down low. In fact, those three players you just mentioned, there's only 11 Division I players who are averaging at least 18 points and 10 boards, and three of them come from the Big 12 in Smith, Collier, and Mack. Yeah, and Aoka Lee is another player that I thought would have a little bit more, better of a season. K-State has struggled some, and you know, she had an injury early, but she's another very talented player with size in this league. And it's going to be an interesting battle down the stretch of Big 12 with the way West Virginia's playing. Iowa State has had some bright moments with their young team. Oklahoma coming on at the right time. It's going to be interesting to see how things end up in this conference. And you know who Baylor plays next? West Virginia at home. The Mountaineers are coming into Waco for their next game. And you see Texas, boy, it's been over seven and a half minutes since they have scored a point. And the defense collapsing down low on Ebo. And they throw it away to Moon, Urson. And once again, Texas working through Ebo. Charlie Collier is on the other side of the floor. But great job by Chevalier to get back and pick up the offensive foul. Got more basketball heading your way at 7 Eastern on Tuesday. At men's basketball, Michigan State heading up to West Lafayette to take on number 24, Purdue. And then the matchup of the night, it's a Big 12 Red River showdown. You can never miss when Texas plays Oklahoma in anything. Soon as beat the Longhorns in a thriller by one point last month. And Austin catch the rematch tomorrow night. Also available on the ESPN app. And see, that's a possession where you got to know that you've got Charlie Collier on the pick and pop. Instead of taking a contested mid-range, try to drive and, and kick it back to her to, to create. Right, Texas in a major scoring drought. They only had three points in the last eight minutes of the second quarter and just two points in the first seven minutes of this quarter. Baylor in control. Dick Schaefer going to try to figure things out when we come back. Oh, we cannot wait. It is coming up. Championship week starting on March the 3rd. And, uh, Vic Schaefer's team, as you see, projected as one of five Big 12 teams, according to Charlie Cream. Baylor, he says, is a number two seed. And, and he said that was safe whether they won or lost today. They're not going to lose today. So uh, five teams. Oklahoma State, somewhat of a, a, a surprise this year, getting into the picture. Yeah, Coach Littell has done an outstanding job with his team this season. The development of Natasha Mack, some young players in the backcourt that have given them more stability on the perimeter. And even their loss to Texas, you know, Natasha Mack left the game with an injury for an extended amount of time, and that was helpful to Texas. That's where Charlie Collier really made her presence felt. And so that was a game that I thought would be a better contest after Oklahoma State won the first one. But, um, yeah, he's done a heck of a job this season. And so has Mike Carey. I can't say enough about what Mike Carey has done at West Virginia with Kaiser Gondrzic being a player of the year candidate. Um, you know, this is that's a team that coming into this year we thought could be dangerous. Um, as Mary Martinez has had a great season breakout, might be the most improved player in the Big 12. Carrington. Knocks down the shot after two missed free throws for Texas. The Longhorns are one for seven from the line, 0 for seven from three. Just uh, an abysmal performance well, and, by and this Texas team. And Collier gave the ball up there. She had it on the post. The cutter goes by. She gave it to the cutter. She hasn't taken a, a shot in the third quarter. 
Yeah, has only taken three shots all day, none in the third quarter. Saddled with three fouls, but she's been out there. How do you explain that? You know, I think it's a combination of things. Yes, Baylor's aggressiveness on defense will take you out of what you want to do on offense, but I think Charlie Collier has got to be prepared to make her impact felt in other ways. Offensive rebounds, put back, really demanding the ball, and that's what I'm used to seeing from her is she, she has an incredible motor and a great work ethic, and she is usually making herself a target and making herself available. Um, and we haven't seen that so much. I don't know if the foul trouble really startled her, but, um, you know, her team hasn't really necessarily been, been looking out for her as the number one option on offense either. And now Charlie heads back to the bench to take another break. Look at that line. More turnovers than points. Just not the kind of effort. Because you're right, usually she's going 100 miles an hour no matter what. Well, I could see if she was taking shots and getting it blocked or getting the ball taken from her or really struggling against the double team. It, there just hasn't even been the opportunities or the looks, I guess I would say, uh, on the offensive end, you know, to speak to what we've seen. Texas with just 19 points, shooting 22% from the floor. Andrew Warren has just picked up her fourth personal foul. You see the frustration by Collier, but she's a, she's a great player. And, you know, this is, a, again, a number of factors that have played into how she's performed. And you don't want to take any of the credit away from Baylor, but she has had a, a great season. And I still think, at least as of right now, in my opinion, based on what we know could happen in, in the 2021 WNBA draft, that she would be the top pick. That is if she elects to come out early. You see Texas has, in this quarter, missed 10 of 11 shots. Did at least draw a foul on this trip. These two teams will meet again in Austin on March the 1st. That's another ESPN2 game. Foul on Melissa Smith, her second. Coming up, we have a very special NBA Sunday doubleheader for you on ESPN and the app. It's the Blazers starting a three-game road trip against the Mavs, who won three in a row at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Then it's LeBron and the champions taking on the Nuggets. Coverage of this Valentine's Day doubleheader starts at 7 Eastern, and that is tonight. That's at the top of the hour. So NBA coming your way. It's been a crazy NBA season, but... You know the one constant, Pam? I haven't watched. LeBron. Well, that oh. too. <laughs> yes, that's the other constant. You haven't watched, and LeBron is still turning back okay. the hands of time. The two yeah, things you can count on, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> watching a lot of college and NHL here. Yeah, you said you were watching a little NHL. Yeah, the Canadians that's... beat the Maple Leafs last night. It's a big win. Okay, well, if you say so. <laughs> Let me get you on skates one day. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Roller skates, yes. Ice skates, no. By the way, you could probably ice skate in Texas right now. Please, yeah. everyone be safe. This weather is scary. Yeah, it really is. That, that breaks a drought of eight straight shots missed by Texas. Celeste Taylor, and you know, all kidding aside, we certainly hope everyone is doing well there with all the ice storms and and, uh, te and uh, Texas had to leave early to come yesterday, dealing with some operational issues as well. And uh, Kim Mulkey actually wanted her fans to stay home and just watch it on the TV, as she said. Yeah, she did. Didn't want them to even chance it. Especially because she said a lot of their fan base is older and she was concerned about them possibly slipping and, um, you know, just wanted them to be very careful. So here we go, Texas, in the waning seconds of the third quarter. Richards, good defense to affect the shot by Allen Taylor. And Baylor just continues to roll. 41-23 uh, as we head to the fourth quarter in Waco. Back to Baylor, and it has been a tough evening for Charlie Collier on the catch here. Baylor has been in her face, in her space, contesting shots with their length. She has not been able to get going and in fact has only 
taken three shots the entire game, and I guess that's the most disappointing part of this is that she has not gotten even more touches through the course of this game. Two points, one for three from the field, and uh, just um, a subpar, if even that afternoon, for the young woman who's projected to go number one overall in the WNBA draft in 2021. And here are some historical numbers for Texas. And none of them are good. They've soared in the single digits in all three quarters so far. And you see uh, the third quarter, they also had nine points against West Virginia. And that was a, a game in which they lost. Charlie Collier got into foul trouble in that one, only had five points fouled out in 22 minutes. And uh, foul trouble here, but it's not just the foul trouble. The, the defense really taking her out of her game, and we've not seen the aggressiveness that we're used to seeing from Charlie. And we talked to her yesterday, and she talked about the influence that her late father had on her. And, and she said the only her motto was, the only person who can stop me is me. And uh, the, that's not been the case today. She's been stopped by a lot of lady bears as well. So how do you bounce it, back from this, Charlie Collier? This is uh, the, the Dallas Wings making all the, the WNBA has been insane with all of the trades going on. And Dallas traded for the number one pick earlier this week. It had been uh, the New York Liberty that had it. And uh, this Houston native is uh, has been the talk of the town. A lot of people thinking that if she does indeed decide not to come back for her true senior season next year, that she might be the number one pick. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conversation. This year, um, it, there's no clear-cut number one, top four, lottery, none of that. You know, it's going to be an interesting draft year because all of these players have the option of going back to school. And so no one's running out of their college eligibility, so it'll be up to them whether they decide to keep the make the leap for those that are eligible. Um, but there are some players that excite me. You know, Charlie Collier obviously is one. Arella Garantes of Rutgers is one that I think is very much slept on. She can score from all three levels. She's an incredible athlete, has size. Defense is probably the more overlooked aspect of her game. Oh, Natasha Mack, um, obviously, and how she's played this season. Now, it, it's more about her upside. Um, definitely needs more development. And Charlie Collier's upside, I think, is the, probably the, the most attractive aspect of her game as well is because she's just starting to scratch the surface. But Dana Evans of Louisville and Ari McDonald, I mean, there's you look across the country and there's some really exciting players that could make the jump. You just don't know. And unfortunately, Ryan Howard, from what we understand, is not eligible. So... That would have been a, another one that I would have loved to see in the WNBA next year. Yeah, I think next year she's, she's going to be at the top, if not a certain, close to the top, if not at the top. Melissa Smith took a little bit of a knock as she went to the floor and uh, updating uh, Carrington. Dijon Carrington has fouled out for Baylor, goes out with a team high 13 points. You know, seeing Melissa Smith come down on that play reminds me of something that Vic Schaefer said. He said, Baylor plays defense in the air. Um, and he's exactly right. They jump for every rebound. They jump on the defensive end. They are always, this looks very similar to what happened to Dee Richards the other day. And she was on the defensive end looking to make a play. But you hope that Melissa Smith is okay. You saw her holding her head. Not a pretty spill. That's the fifth foul on Audrey Warren. So she has fouled out for Texas, drew three charges on the day, but it's four points for Audrey. We're told that they are looking at this play to see if it was anything more than just a foul, which I believe was the call on the floor on Audrey Warren there. I, to me, it's a basketball play. Warren is trying to box out something that you're taught. Now, displacement is a foul, but there's nothing excessive there that would warrant an upgrade. And it has indeed been called a common foul on Warren, who fouls out. And that's an example, again, of them. As you said, they're playing in the air, and Warren is boxing out. but. You know, Melissa Smith can jump through the gym, and she just kept going, and uh, Melissa unfortunately took that hard hit. But the good news is we see Smith is still in the game for Baylor.
Baylor this half has not been lighting it up. Just three field goals and, and 10 turnovers for Baylor in this half, in this half. And yet they're still up by 18. So Kim Mulkey's not gonna be happy about that. No, 41 points. Mm -mm. She won't be happy about that at all. And 30, shooting 38% from the field on the game. Vic Schaefer will be happy though. But again, we go back to what he told us about his defense. You know, he said, this field goal percentage defense we're shooting this year is, is not up to expectation. We asked him how much of his defense has he been able to incorporate since arriving in Austin. Not very much. He's still trying to teach these players, um, you know, just how hard you really have to play. In fact, he told us, I think, I've got four players that'll take a charge. If you're gonna play for Vic Schaefer, <laughs> all 11 players right now yeah. on this roster have to be willing yes. to take a charge. Yes, that will be a, a requirement. And he talked about the players having to adjust in this new system with Vic Schaefer and his excellent staff. And he said they just have to get used to not just, you know, the hard stuff and getting past playing the hard stuff. Yes, it's hard. You have to accept that, embrace it, and keep going. Good finish there in traffic by Queen Egbo. But, you know, I mean, if you know Vic Schaefer, you know he's going to get it done. I mean... They signed the number four recruiting class coming in for next year, according to ESPNW Hoop Girls. So he's already attracting the recruits. You know, this group that he has here, which is young in terms of understanding his system, will have more experience. Currently, Texas has missed 18 of its 20 shots in this half. Big 12 now is on ESPN Plus. It's a must have for all you Big 12 fans. Wednesday night. The Longhorn square off against TCU at 7.30 Eastern and then West Virginia Baylor. We already talked about that Wednesday at 8 Eastern and the early rounds of the Big 12 women's tournament starting March 11th. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12. Now we take a timeout in Waco. Welcome back. Baylor is only 11 points in the second half, but still in control. And we honor Kay Yao during this uh, Play for K week and just some of the famous Yao-isms as she uh, fought breast cancer so valiantly for so long. When life kicks you, let it kick you forward. Think positive. Never, ever give up. When you're behind, don't give up. And that was just her. So resilient and so positive. And it is difficult to find anybody who uh, was not positively affected by Kay Yao. And we honor her today. And we also ask you if you can chip in and support the KL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research by donating at KL.com. We realize this is a, a very difficult time for many, many people. And, and even if it's a dollar, anything would help. And all of it goes to cancer research. Yeah, beautiful pass there to Melissa Smith at the rim. But my favorite KL ism is don't wallow in self-pity swish your feet and get out and that just reminds me of the fight that she showed against cancer she didn't feel sorry for herself she didn't sit at home in fact in her final days she was on the sideline coaching and inspiring her nc state team so she's okay with you feeling bad for yourself for a moment but then you got to get out and you have to fight and we're all responsible for being a part of that fight whether you have battled cancer, you know someone who has, we can all be a part of finding the cure through cancer research. Yes, because I'm sure everyone has been affected by it one way or the other. Kim Mulkey breaking out the pink leather for Kayao game. Carolyn Peck and I actually got to go into her closet a, a couple years ago when we did the NCAA tournament down there, and boy, it is exactly what you would think it is. It's oh, big, really? And it's got a lot of, lot of sparkly stuff. A lot of glitter. A lot of shoes. Well, she is uh, always ready to go on the sideline. Carolyn Peck had a beautiful pink dress yeah. on today for her game. She and Courtney Lau had, had the SEC matchup on ESPN today. Lots of great games and lots of pink for women's basketball. I just love the way these teams get behind the KL Cancer Fund and their fans and everyone joins together to bring awareness 
and hope that we can all impact the fight against cancer in some way. And Kim Mulkey, this is also Valentine's Day, and we talked to Vic Schaefer yesterday, and he said that Kim Mulkey, who is the tough, you know, she just seems, you know, it very, very gritty. I mean, from Louisiana Tech, playing for USA as a head coach, she's, she's so competitive. But Coach Schaefer told us that Kim is the only coach who called to congratulate him and to welcome him to the Big 12 when he got the job at Texas. Yeah, That's he said it sweet. meant a lot to him. Yeah, yeah, he said Kim Mulkey picked up the phone. He said, we're both family people, and he just talked about how much that meant to him. And, you know, I mean, you got to love the toughness of both of these coaches and what they believe in on the defensive end. We were talking, Pam, you know, the other day about the one head-to-head -head matchup they had, which was an incredible game where Mississippi State beat Baylor after a major performance by Morgan William. What a memorable moment. Yeah, that was the 2017 Elite Eight game. Morgan had 41 points, and Baylor lost in overtime. That was when they were going through that little stretch where they just could not get over the hump and win an Elite Eight game. And uh, Coach Schaefer certainly remembers that, but it's a whole different story today. Kim Mulkey uh, and her defense. Look at this. This is going back over, what's that, 40? 1977 was what, 41 years ago? In program history right now, this is the uh, second fewest. You see Texas with the 27 points. It has just been a monumental day for Baylor. And Queen Egbo gets to celebrate with a chance at a three point play. Yeah, Queen is starting to really understand what it takes for her to be a consistent part of what Baylor does on both ends, night in and night out. Hasn't shot the ball particularly well, two for seven from the field, but seven rebounds and has played solid defense without getting in too much foul trouble um, at the right times. Excuse me, back up, four for seven. She has 11 rebounds and she has nine points, and she actually has been very efficient today. So apologize for that, Queen. You got that. Yep, and one of the best nicknames going. Yeah, Queen. She does have five turnovers, though. Got to clean those up. Yep. One point away from a double-double for Egbo. Moon Urson, by the way, leading Baylor in rebounding with 12. She's got another double-double. But uh, you look this for Baylor. They've only scored 18 points in the second half. But have, this game really has not been in doubt for a while. You see Moon's numbers and a player who did not start until she was a senior and he just is the consummate team player. Waited her turn. Played whatever role Kim Mulkey has needed from her. She also has a great name, Moon. Absolutely, all nickname team. Queen this time. She's got a double-double, so both Moon and Queen. That's good, the two best nicknames on the team. Both have a double-double this afternoon. Great catch and good hands by Egbo. Five for eight from the field. 11 and 11 in 32 minutes. And, and she Dee only Dee has, has two fouls. I'm sorry, Dee Dee has 10 assists now. Well, passing has been easy for Dee Dee Richards in this game. I mean, starting right away from the first offensive possession, you could see that she was going to be passing over the top of the smaller backcourt for Texas, and she's done that consistently. And this is this is a Texas team, Pam, where their number one goal is to force you to turn it over. And Baylor does have 19 turnovers. But Richards, 10 and three, I'll take it, especially for a player that is not a natural point guard. And just the one point, DD has only taken four shots from the floor, missed them all, but those 10 assists and she's you know we've spoke to her spoke to her earlier in the season and she credits her teammates with that with all the assists being up very few turnovers a terrific assist to turnover rate and now queen yells because of she just got a nice block oh queen is been showing all the emotion On weak side here, Queen Egbo gets out, avoids making body contact, vertical. Just a beautiful block. 
with an emphatic scream after that. <laughs> that is the first block for her today. Dee Dee Richards at the free throw line. As we go under four minutes left to go in this game, Baylor doubling up Texas, 54 to 27. Texas has scored just 10 points in the second half, only four here in the fourth quarter. And I want to also mention, we've talked a lot about the WNBA draft. You know, DeJanae Carrington, I'm, I believe is eligible. Dee Dee Richards, I'm, I'm pretty sure is as well. And they're both two players that um, I believe will get drafted in the, in the WNBA draft. Dee Dee Richards has shown the ability to play multiple positions, be a playmaker. But you know the WNBA as well as I do in that having someone that can take a player out of the game is important. And Dee Dee can do that with her defense. When you've got a wing in the WNBA, an Angel McCautry, for example, you put Dee Dee Richards on her defensively, and you're cutting the point production for your opponent, you know, by 20 points because she's going to keep the ball out of their hands. And DeJanae Carrington is also extremely versatile and can offer a lot on both ends of the floor. And so I, I just wanted to touch on those two in particular. Um, I don't believe that Melissa Smith is eligible at this point for the, for the WNBA draft, but boy, is she going to have a future when she decides to go. Absolutely. Taylor now with 11 points. Just got that tough bucket for Texas. And, and we talk about Melissa Smith with the 10 assists and being a, a turning into an elite point guard in the only year she's ever played it. Uh, was the defensive national player of the year last year for Baylor. And does that mean she's going to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That doesn't mean that Dee Dee Richards is going to, by any means, play point guard in the WNBA, but it shows that she has the ability to be a playmaker. Yeah, versatility is such a big thing in the uh, WNBA. Positionless basketball, that's a term you hear a lot now. Kyra Lambert off the mark. Charlie Collier still is not taking a shot in the second half. Uh, Disappointing. That baffles me. Disappointing to say the least. Yeah, ACC Big 12 Big Monday men's doubleheader coming up on ESPN in the app tomorrow night. Number nine Virginia squaring off against Florida State at 7 Eastern. And then Big 12 time as number seven Texas Tech heads to Fort Worth to take on TCU coming up tomorrow on ESPN and the ESPN app. Two minutes to go. And big Monday for the women tomorrow. There's going to be a nice big announcement, right, LaChina, with the uh, first reveal? Yes, the top 16 reveal. We heard Coach Landers and Rebecca talking about it in studio. And this is probably one of the more anticipated reveals that we've had since the NCAA started doing this because of so much uncertainty around how the selection committee will adjust to COVID. Um, as Charlie Collier fouls out here, you know, there's so much to consider, in my opinion, from scheduling um, to, you know, players having to play without their full arsenal. You know, I, I think one thing that can, should be taken into consideration is teams coming off of a pause, you know, and, and how they play immediately coming off of maybe a long stretch of being away. And, I mean, it's just going to be interesting to see. And, um, you know, the selection committee definitely has their work cut out for them. So Charlie Collier has fouled out. She only scored two points, one of three from the floor, five rebounds, and did not take a shot in the second half from the floor. Did not get yeah, to the free throw line either, and she usually gets there seven and a half times per game. That's mind-boggling for me that she did not take a shot in the second half. I, I don't understand how that happens if you're Texas. I wonder what's going through Charlie's mind right now. That's not going to be a fun bus ride back to Austin. About 100 miles between Waco and Austin. Texas goes to TCU and 
They will finish their regular season against Baylor at home on March 1st. It's Kyra Lambert, I wonder if he's calling her coach now. Kyra has been accepted in the I want to be a coach program, or so you want to be a coach, excuse me. And, and uh, Coach Schaefer says when she messes up, he starts calling her coach and then <laughs> gives her pointers. And I have a feeling that was one of those moments right there. Yeah, like, come on, coach. You got to see that. Puts a little extra accountability on you, right? Absolutely. I think Lambert's going to be an outstanding coach. She's probably going to leave Texas with, well, she already has a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, so will she be Dr. Lambert by the time she leaves Texas? But how great is it for Kyra Lambert, a player that missed out on two seasons due to injury, to have the option to come back next year? I mean, I yeah. wonder if she ever thought her career would be extended to this point that, you know, she she could she could play another year. Get another degree. Melissa Smith with the bucket. Texas did Oliver. hit. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Oliver who hit that. My apologies. Um, so Texas today, one of 12 from three-point range. Their season low was two made threes. So this is just. Uh, is this? Do you go back and watch the watch the watch the tape here, China, or you just flush this? If you're Texas, uh, I think there's a lot to learn here. If anything, you look at the offensive possessions in the second half and how you could have utilized Car uh, Charlie Collier or how you could have gotten her involved because she will need to be uh, a bigger option on the offensive end. Um, you know, and there are some tough defensive teams. A lot of teams will play Texas uh, zone. A lot of teams will play Baylor zone because they are not strong three-point shooting teams. But this was man-to-man. -man. West Virginia is going to play man. You got to go back and you got to watch and figure out how you can grow from this. Every yeah. game is a teaching opportunity. So Texas wins or Texas loses for the ninth straight time to Baylor. Tied for the, sec the second fewest points in program history as Kim has a a word with Vic, Charlie Collier, a very disappointing day, just three shots, none in the second half. But Baylor looking good, winning 60 to 35. So for LaChina Robinson, the rest of our crew, I'm Pam Ward as uh, we say so long from Waco. Four Baylor Bears in double figures, a double-double for Moon Urson. Just a, a good day all the way around for Baylor as we get you back to the studio, Kelsey, Andy, and Rebecca.